This video is a response to the Distributus series on nerd culture. Before you watch this video, I highly recommend you watch his series. I will link it down below. I'm going to start by saying the series was exceptionally done. He brought to light what is wrong with the current way that nerd culture is consumed and how it's reflective of many of the problems with Western society today. I want to give some insight into my own experiences participating in and eventually leaving nerd culture to provide an idea of what I believe could be a replacement to the deficient nerd culture which the distributist described. I grew up, like many boys in the 2000s, an avid consumer of nerd culture. I certainly didn't fit the mold of the stereotypical nerd, but I was a big fan of many of these nerd series. I loved Star Wars and Marvel, I played Magic the Gathering and Warhammer 40k, and of course, spent hours and hours a week playing video games. Though I never went to conventions or got into cosplay, I'd say that my fandom of many of these series became part of my identity. I really fell into the problem that the distributors described of identifying with a corporate-owned product. I grew up not that interested in the outside world, finding the fantasy worlds of Star Wars and the Marvel Universe much more interesting. So yes, I'd say the majority of my cultural involvement was at the mercy of these corporate licenses. And I wouldn't say that my involvement in nerd culture was anything out of the ordinary. I'd say I was just a product of my time. I was a teenage boy in the late 2000s and early 2010s. It was just what you did. Things changed for me in 2014 as it did for countless other consumers of nerd culture. Most of you probably already know the event I'm referring to, but for those of you who don't, what changed nerd culture for me was the era of Gamergate. This was when the SJW takeover of nerd culture began. Many beloved characters were replaced in order to make them more quote-unquote diverse, storylines were written to force progressive politics down the consumer's throat, and the media and creators behind these series labeled any fans that didn't like the change racist or sexist. And I hated it. I spent several years angry about what had happened to nerd culture. It really did feel like a betrayal on the part of these franchises, which I had spent so much time and effort towards, not to mention money, and from which most of my entertainment was derived. As the progressives began to dominate more and more of nerd culture, I began to consume less and less of it. Because there was something interesting that happened for me. There was this one series that I became a fan of in my late teens. This series was longer running than any other. It was bigger than any other, and it had better stories than any other. And no matter what, the SJWs couldn't ruin it. This series is not the story of a fictional universe, but of our own. I'm referring to history. As these fantasy series began to fail me, I realized that there are better true stories out there than any fiction could ever produce. And I really just lost interest in nerd culture. Captain Cook is cooler than Captain Kirk. And they could never write a story about Captain Kirk's voyage on the USS Enterprise as amazing as the story of Captain Cook's voyage on the HMS Endeavor. Star Wars might have created a fictitious order of spiritual knights and the Jedi, but there really was an order of deeply religious knights that fought for their god. They were called the Knights Templar. No matter how many hundreds of millions of dollars Disney spends on the next Marvel movie, where the Avengers save the world from aliens, it'll never be as epic as the story of how Francis Drake saved England from the Spanish Armada. So what difference does it make? What difference does it make if the stories that people are fascinated by are real or not? I think we can look at the origins of nerd culture for an answer. In his series, the distributist placed the advent of the identity of the nerd as a mid to late 20th century phenomenon. The first two major nerd culture series were Star Trek and Star Wars, with Star Trek premiering in 1966 and Star Wars premiering in 1977. Now there had been plenty of sci-fi series before these that had fan bases, but these were the first two that really took off. Not only were people fans of them, they became an identity. They would buy merchandise, dress up as the characters, go to conventions, learn about the extended universe, 
They evolved from being a series of films to becoming a brand which fans derived their identity off of, as he described in the series. The distributor said that nerd culture was something that would not have been economically viable before the early 20th century. I believe, though, that there is another reason why nerd culture became a thing when it did, and it goes beyond technology. For example, the first book in the Lord of the Rings franchise, The Hobbit, was published in 1937. Lord of the Rings went on to become another huge nerd culture brand, but that was many years later. The books were popular upon release, but it didn't go on to become a franchise with merchandise and fan communities till several decades later. I just can't fathom people dressing up as Lord of the Rings characters, buying merchandise, and forming these fan communities in the 1930s. Even if it was among the upper middle class, who by then, it would have been economically viable. The example in the series of the first devote fan base was Sherlock Holmes in the late 19th and early 20th century. It had devout readers, but it never had merchandise and an extended universe. It never became something people would identify with. It was really just a series of books. I can't imagine anyone deriving their identity from a fictional series prior to World War II, and not for a technological reason, but for a cultural one. I see the post-war era, especially the 60s and 70s, as the point where the West really started to lose its belief in itself. This was the era when the old European empires began to fall. It was now seen as dangerous to be nationalistic rather than noble. This was the era of the Vietnam War. This was when Westerners really began to turn away from Christianity and become more secular. Society as a whole began to lose faith in traditional values and institutions, as traditional culture was uprooted and gradually replaced with what we would call today progressive culture. I'd say this is where the deterioration of Western culture really began to accelerate. People began to have less of a sense of identity, belonging, and value that they could derive from their civilization. An example I often use on my channel is architecture. You can see how over the course of the late 20th century, standards in architecture fell drastically. Modernist architecture really shows a lack of care for the land that it inhabits. And I think that it is symbolic of society as a whole. I believe that this cultural decline was what allowed nerd culture to rise in the first place. Young men no longer had a culture to identify with, so they escaped into these fantasy worlds. There have always been stories set in these extravagant fictional universes, but nerd culture of the last few decades was the first time that people began to identify with them. They not only enjoyed these worlds, they did whatever they could to bring as much of it to life as possible. And this is something that fans of nerd culture took seriously. I mean, look at the amount of money put into these conventions and cosplay, and all these things fans do to experience the series that they love. It wasn't Star Wars movies that made George Lucas as rich as he is, it was Star Wars merchandise. I think this is why there was a real sense of betrayal when SJWs hijacked all these nerd culture series over the past few years. They were really the only thing filling a cultural void. It was something that fans had spent so much time, money, and effort on, and to have it turn ideologically against them really hurt. So, why is being a history buff any better than being a Star Wars fan? Star Wars might be a fictional world, but isn't history just a world that no longer exists? Isn't it just living in the past? Well, I'll give some insight into how it affected me differently than nerd culture. After reading all these amazing stories, a lot of my discontent with the modern world was the fact that it offered no opportunity to ever take part in anything equivalent. I could never be like James Cook. I could never be like Napoleon. I could never experience the same spirituality as the Knights Templar, and I could never feel the same pride in my modern society that the Victorians felt in theirs. The real red pill for me was seeing how far Western culture had fallen. I realized that what had happened to nerd culture over the past few years has been happening to my own culture over the past few decades. The difference it made for me though was, I realized that I shouldn't be fighting for some fictional world which was just a corporate property. My fight was here, in the real world. Because it's not just history, it's the present. We are the results of history, and future history will be the results of us.
Instead of a culture that pushed me to consume whatever new product the corporate owners of a sci-fi series released, this was a culture that pushed me to learn about the world, to improve my character, to stand up for a heritage, and to devote myself to a god. What I will say to any disgruntled nerd culture fans who feel that part of their identity has been stolen from them, and I feel this has become the message of my channel as a whole, is don't be mad about Star Wars. Be mad that that is the only thing that was available to you to identify with. Be mad about your real culture, which was stolen from you. The world that you live in is more amazing than any world of fiction. You have a rich culture. You have a rich history. And you can be a part of it, big or small. Because there was only one James Cook, but there was hundreds of men who accompanied him on his voyages. There was only one Napoleon but there was thousands of men that fought in his army. In his series, the distributist described many of the unhealthy habits of nerd culture. He concluded with suggestions on how nerd culture could be made healthier for its adherents. He suggested making it more creative and more about community and sharing, about having a collective identity that fans could participate in. What I might suggest is, what if the same could be done not with nerd culture, but with traditional Western culture? What if communities could be formed to create art, share stories, and promote values that celebrate the Western tradition? I think the reason so many young men adopt nerd culture is because the culture they live in is so unappealing. What if they could be shown that traditional Western culture is an amazing culture and that they could take part in it? I look at something like Comic-Con San Diego. Look at all the money, time, and effort put into this thing. There's more than 100,000 people that attend. It makes hundreds of millions of dollars. People dress up in these costumes and they spend hours waiting to see some nerd culture celebrity. Wouldn't it be amazing if all these people could feel the same passion about their own culture? Not some corporate-owned fantasy world, but their own heritage. Who they are as people. Imagine what they could achieve. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and follow me on Twitter. Link in the description. Thank you for listening. Till next time, Endeavor.